Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. Happy Friday! I hope that you have had the most amazing week ever. But before we get into how my week went, and I'm hoping you had an amazing week, can we just have a moment to meet and greet some of the new listeners who may be tuning in to Conversations with Toy for the first time? First of all, welcome. I hope that when you are listening to this podcast, there is something that resonates with you. I don't want to use my voice and come on here just to talk about me and life and all the craziness things if I felt like it was just going to go into just, you know, deaf ears. My purpose is to make sure that you feel encouraged, empowered, and when things sound or feel or are really bad, that you realize that you are not alone. That's the number one thing. There's been many times I've gone through so many hardships and I felt like I was just like a colorful zebra that just everything happened to, you know, wrong for me at the same time. And I felt like everybody else's lives were perfect or not necessarily perfect, but they were doing way better than me. One of the things that I've learned when you listen to other people's stories is that you get to hear a glimpse of yourself. You finally get to be heard. You get seen. It's all of the things. And so that's what I hope this podcast does. There are times and moments when we encourage one another. There are times and moments when we may have to talk about real conversations that are uncomfortable because not everything can be, you know, packaged in this way that seems so beautiful and pretty and all of the things all the time. Sometimes life is messy. Sometimes our choices and our responses to those choices happen. And those times when things get messy or blurred, we have to have a conversation with about it. So that is what Conversations with Toy is all about. I will always talk about mental health. This podcast, as well as the blog, because I am a blogger as well, was made and built on the fact that I felt completely alone and isolated because I felt like I was the only one in my friend group, the only one in my mom group, the only one in my wife group, the only one in all the groups that felt like my mental health had taken a dive and there was nothing I could do to fix it. And sometimes when we keep telling ourselves that there's no relief, we kind of speak that on ourselves, but it doesn't always mean remain true. Sometimes just simply asking for help or knowing that you can ask for help is the best part. Now, I've been in situations where I've gone through my mental health struggles. I've gone through my bouts of anxiety. I've gone through my belts of depression. I've gone through my belts of all kinds of things. And it was true. I didn't have somebody who understood my perspective because it was a my perspective. But one thing about it is you got to understand you are not by yourself in this world. You never are. It may feel isolating. It may feel that way. But I promise you, there is another you somewhere else in this world that needs exactly what you have. And this is exactly why I continue will always continue to share my story. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Let this not be your Last time, even though this may be your first time listening in, again, I hope to encourage by using my voice, my stories, the guests that come in and share their stories. That's what it's all about because sharing is most definitely caring. Now, with all that being said, this has been a very interesting week and I do mean a very interesting week. There's a lot of things that we got to talk about on these internet streets that we have to have conversations about because... It's a lot. It's a lot going on. But before we start that, okay, Barbie, let's go party. It is Barbie weekend. The official movie is out today. I have seen it. I've seen it earlier this week. It is a good movie. Now, if you say to yourself, I'm not a Barbie fan. I really didn't play with them, you know, as a child. That's okay. The movie is for you. If you said, I had everything Barbie, I was the Barbie master, I was like the captain, the, the principal, the the president of the Barbie club, this movie is for you. If you say, I'm a guy, what do I need to be watching a Barbie movie? I hate to burst your bubble, but the Barbie movie is for you. It is something for everyone, regardless of the level of fandom or not that you may feel or have, you know, to participate in. I promise you, Barbie is for you. 
this movie had a lot of nostalgia. This movie had a lot of amazing messaging. Now, listen, I know that all of our listeners are not moms and you don't have to be to be on this podcast because this is not a parent uh, podcast. It's very rare that I will share parenting tips because parenting is so subjective and parenting just has its own hazing, its own of its own. So everybody is not a parent and nor should everybody be a parent. There's a lot of folks that's parents now that probably shouldn't be, but that's another conversation for another day. I say all that to say that for the moms in this particular movie, there is a particular part that I will not divulge, but what I will say to you for all the moms that were in the audience, we all were talking about it. And the part that is played in the movie about mothers literally encourage my soul. I have three children of my own and a husband. He is not my child and I do not treat him, act or even call him my child because to call him my child would defeat the purpose of me marrying him because that is not of the will. I say all this to say is if you are a mom, you aspire to be a mom, this part in the movie, you will clearly see it. It's very well prominent. It is a message of in itself and it was absolutely beautiful. I felt seen. I felt heard. I felt encouraged to be a better mom. There is a message in that movie for just the moms and it doesn't isolate. So again, let me preface this. This is not a mom movie. It's an all for all movie. It's for the children, it's for the adults, it's for the ain'ts, it's for the saints, it's for all the folks. It's for everybody. So go and check out Barbie the movie. It is encouraging, it's inspiring, it's history, it's nostalgia, it's funny. And if you're wondering if you should take your children, I always go with the rule of thumb. If I question if I should go see something with my children, I view it first and then I take them. Yes, I will go and view a movie and then decide if I'm going to take them. With all of the Barbie wonderfulness and seeing a preview of it this week before it hit the, uh, you know, the movie stands, I will say there has been quite a few pop-ups here in the Philadelphia area. So if you live in Philly or you're visiting Philly or you're going to be in Philly the next few weeks, there are amazing Barbie pop-ups. One that I want to talk about is at Blondie, which is actually in Maniuk, a little outside of Philadelphia. I say maybe it's about a good 10 to 15 minutes outside of Philadelphia. And Blondie is doing an amazing pop-up. I mean, they did not pull back. They did not hold back. They did not cut back on the budget. They let it all hang. Let me tell you, they have a pink room, enough said, and inside that pink room is all of the Barbie things. Then they have a second floor because they knew that they were going to sell out on this experience and they made the second floor a Barbie experience and it is everything a Barbie experience could be. There are drinks, there is a bar, there are the pink food and all of the things and the food is actually good. Now listen, we all know that everybody named mom about to come out of the woodworks with a Barbie cocktail. And I'm going to share her Barbie cocktail at the end of the show for the drink of the week because listen, that's the season that we're in. However, what I will say is somebody, some people just kind of put pink into their drinks and think that this good is good, but it don't be. At Blondie, I give my stamp of approval. The drinks are official. The food is delicious. The surface is impeccable and they went out. They did not spare the budget. When you go there, you're going to get a full on experience from the music, from the vibes to the food, to the drinks. You're going to feel like you stepped into the movie and you have become your own Barbie. So go and check that out again. The name of the place is called Blondie. It is located in Maniunk, which is about less than 10 to 15 minutes from the Philadelphia area. The area around Blondie has some street parking, but there are also parking lots nearby. It's actually very cool, convenient. And again, I can't stress enough, go check it out. And since we're going to talk about events, I'm going to get right into a couple of events that I went to this week. Outside of the many Barbie pop-ups that I have gone to, I think I went to two Barbie pop-ups and then some uh, another event, I'll say some other, but another event um, by which it was absolutely amazing. And I'll just say that... The vibes that I got this week was very encouraging at a lot of these events. You know, it's amazing when you meet people online and they really turn out to be who they say they are online because that's very rare. It's unfortunate, but it's rare. And the events that I took place were all about empowerment and about encouraging and that's 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 my vibe right there. I love anything that's going to be because listen, if I leave my house, I didn't leave my house for no junk. 
<laughs> Let me say that to somebody so they can hear me with my good with their good ear. If I leave my house to attend an event, I did not come to hear no junk, to hear no sad stories, to hear no foolishness, no foolery. I could have stayed at home. I could have been editing. I could have been creating content. I could have been chilling with my family. I could have been sleeping with my snuggy or my husband, hubby. But I, if I leave my house, I don't want to come for no food to no mess. So I'm grateful for the events that I've attended. I'm going to be talking about them on the blog, which came out today. Because again, I feel like sometimes just being in the good presence of good people is always important. So let's go ahead and get right into the hot topic that everybody has been talking about this week. And that is Miss Carly Russell. Now, I know they said that her name was said a different way, but Carlithia, Carly Nicole Russell. Yes, I said the whole government name because, listen, she did not report herself missing. However, she was supposedly on the phone with someone and stated that she was, you know, heard a baby crying. So she went into the woods after she heard this baby crying and you hear her supposedly allegedly scream in the midst of the scream whoever she was talking to on the other end then began to call the police three minutes the police showed up and her car was still there her phone her wig and i believe like an iphone like a not only her phone but like an iWatch watch or something to that effect was there you know these things were not missing but she was and now we all know there's no way in the world, not in 2023, in the name of our Lord, would anybody leave their cell phone without just cause. Now, before I get into what we already know, let's just talk about the fact there's some things that we need to discuss. One, many a women have been lured by the stories of a child in stress. This is the reason why they tell women do not go to the car, you know, alone. And if you do and you see some random stroller somewhere or a uh, uh, car seat don't approach because again people will use that to lure women it is very true it's been known it's not something that's made up it is the absolute truth in this particular situation it wasn't the case for miss carly but in most cases because most people would not do what miss carly did which is to lie and say that this situation happened and then discovered that it did not happen. Now, some of the facts that have come from the story is that they had checked where they had seen where she had went and she had stopped at a convenience store or a Target or some other store and began to purchase snacks. Later on, after she supposedly allegedly pulls back up to the house as if nothing had happened, she's stating that she was kidnapped and that the people were doing harm to her and they were feeding her Cheez-Its. <sighs> from a reform liar this is me somebody who used to lie just for sake of lying let me just put you on to a few things when you begin to add so many details to the story it becomes very clear that you are lying it's shocking right when you begin to tell too many details of a story it becomes very clear that you are lying and in the midst of lying it just makes things worse some stories have said that she was already going to possibly be incarcerated or picked up or put into jail or at least have the drama of the whole, you know, arrest because she had been allegedly stealing money from a co-worker or the job itself, whatever the case may be. There are some people that's just like, I don't know what she was doing, where she was at, where she had been, but she was lying and that's all that matters. I don't know what re uh, legal ramifications will come down to her. I'm sure we will find that out in the next couple of weeks or, or months. But what I will say is people have already started the, the garner of saying, this is why I don't support black women. This is why I don't support black women in their stories because it seems too made up. It seems too dramatic and it's not true. Carly is not the representation of all black women. She is not the representation of all black people. And so we have to start to separate the foolishness and the foolery from those who actually need it. If you have evidence, information that could lead to the arrest of a black or brown or white or striped or a polka dot person, and they have gone missing, their families are worried sick, the community has stepped up to help, and you have information, this is not the time to ever withhold information because of Carly. There will be other black women that will have been lured. Lured. There have been other black women, brown women, polka dot women, you know, sideway women, upright women, all the women in the world who have had different vicious things happen to them because somebody decided to prey on them, P-R-E-Y, in their time of distress. 
Okay, so this concept that we're not going to believe women, specifically black women, we're not going to believe when they say something is happening is because of this is mind boggling. Because again, two situations could be true. She could have lied and lied her way to the top of whatever foolishness she comes and comes with. And it could also be true that there's women who just simply needed a helping hand of an understanding stranger that would not have taken advantage of them. And two things can be true at the same time. I have no idea if there will be legal ramifications because technically she did not call on herself, blah, blah, blah. Who knows? I do know that that family has gone through quite a lot. I do know that that family definitely and specifically Carly used a lot of resources that could be used to help other people at different various times instead of them catching her and then letting her go and then all these different things. I don't know if whatever she did is a mental health issue, right? And the more people that keep jumping on this bandwagon, I would just say this, can there be something that's going on with her mental health? Absolutely. But say things like allegedly or we can presume or different things that highlights the language that should be used in a situation such as this, right? Let's keep the conversation where it needs to be instead of diverting from the fact that again, raggedy men, just like raggedy women come in all shapes and sizes from all parts of the world, from all parts of your city, of all parts of your state. So we've got to have some five seconds of grace so that we can continue to move forward in the way that we need to. All right. Conversations with Toys family. I'm so happy to have you here. We are continuing on. We're in with season eight. Well, we have made it through season eight. And with that being said, as always, I always love to bring in amazing guests that talk about different things, whether it's talking about lifestyle, talking about how to be successful, talking about things that we struggle with in ourselves. I like to cover it all. And today is no different. We have Aggie here. She is going to talk with us not only about her amazing book, which is called A Woman's Voice Should Be Heard. We're going to talk to her about that book. We're going to talk to her about what it is to be a woman in these times, because, you know, it's hard. We want women's voices to be heard. And I know I 1000% stand behind that being that I'm a woman raising two amazing young women. I want them to understand that their voice has power. So Aggie, first of all, thank you for being here on this wonderful podcast episode. It is so good to be here. I just I love the opportunity to talk to women. And of course, I love to talk about my book, A Woman's Voice Should Be Heard. And of course, it was my journey. And my memoir from the convent, being in the convent for 14 years, and all of a sudden becoming a feminist who battles for women's equality. That's my life. Uh, listen, and I'm here for it. Talk about the, you know, how you got there. You said this is a memoir of your life. How did we get to a woman's voice should be heard? How did we get there? We got there with the turning point in my life. Um, after I was a teacher for eight years in Catholic schools, I was a nun, I wore the habit, the whole thing. And um, I love teaching. And I love teaching the school and I loved being a nun. I was, um, I suppose that's why I stayed. People yeah. ask me, why did you enter? Why did you leave? Why did you stay? And I felt like I was called by God to actually do this, to dedicate my life to teaching students uh, in Catholic schools. And, uh, and I loved it. And then I was uh, invited to go to the University of Notre Dame to get my doctorate in the administration of higher education. Now picture me just carrying those bags along into the University of Notre Dame in my full habit, getting off the airplane, getting in a cab. This was all new to me, all new. And I go to the dorm. Oh, I felt everybody open their arms to me. They just were so wonderful. Oh, we're so happy to have you. They showed me where they were. These were other nuns. These were other women. That day of arriving there was the beginning of just 
many, many friendships that I had not had in the last 14 years. Uh, friendships were not supposed to be developed in the convent. And I think there was some, well, there was a lot of concern about lesbianism. Mm -hmm. And remember, we had vows of chastity. So that would yes. have been, you know, not unusual yes. right. uh, concern. But it also stopped the whole relationship between friends, which is hmm. necessary in our lives. Right. Or at least it did with me. Maybe I just took it too far. You know, maybe I just didn't understand the whole thing, but I think I did. And um, so one time at the University of Notre Dame, there were two things happening. One was the feminist movement. Remember the women's movement of the late 60s and 70s. And the Catholic Church had just finished its council. And there was a Pope, Pope John XXIII, who said, let's open the windows and let in the air and, and make us come alive in our church. Well, what happened was we had a German scholar who came to talk to us about that council. And he declared that we should all understand that men are the actors and women are the receptacles. Okay. Well, we didn't accept that very well. After the lecture, I thought, well, you know, that's it's nothing changed. It doesn't seem like anything's moving. I go back to the dorm and this whole lobby is filled with women. And at the head of the group was this theologian, a woman, Sister Suzanne, who said, how dare he? I'm, <laughs> I'm saying eyes, you're probably as big as my eyes got, because I know that <laughs> could not have been a good thing to hear. I mean, a good thing to hear, yes, but for everyone else, probably were shocked. We were saying, no, I probably was the only one who wasn't clear on what was happening. All of those women were so much farther ahead than I was in okay. terms of understanding women's rights, feminism, uh, the church, struggling to get full membership in the church, etc. I had just accepted what went on. <laughs> well, that was my transformation. From that moment, well, it didn't happen all of a sudden. That was like the first year, and I was there four years. But the seed and, was planted. It was it, the seed was planted, and it developed, and it grew, and the tree grew, and I, by the fourth year, knew that my calling was now for feminism. My calling was now to move forward, and my first job was with a woman's college. And they were merging with a male college. And I could see immediately that that wasn't going to happen because they weren't going to merge. They were going to be absorbed. Mm. It was kind of my first try. Do you believe what you believe? Um, and from then on, it's been a battle. What has been some of the things that have, you know, because you're talking about the feminist movement, what does the feminist movement mean to you? I mean, I know it meant something I'm sure then, but has it changed? So I guess that's a twofold question. What does the feminist movement mean to you then and has it changed now? I don't think it's changed. I think it, well, in some degree, because we've made some progress, it right. has changed. But then it was a shock to everybody to use the word feminist. It was an abrasion to men. It was, to me, it was simply a woman's right to prove she was equal. Right. But to, I mean, it was new. It was a word that was new. It was used not very often, I say it's new, I'm sure other women had used it through the years, you know, but in fact, it had become a very common word and a controversy. Mm. Today, I think um, 
women are not afraid to say they're a feminist because especially this year, yes, after the Supreme Court decision, we are all very much on alert to make sure, well, we hope we're all on alert. What hope? I, I'm I hope anyone's listening. I hope you're on alert. And if you're not, wake up. It's on, <laughs> the bin, it's on the bin, wake up, but definitely wake up. Because we worked hard for all of those years through the the 20th century and the 20 years and the 21st century to get where we got. I had more rights than my granddaughter had. My granddaughter does not have her own health rights in this country today. And how does that make you feel knowing that you were a part of the conversations, the movement, the, you know, putting in the work so that it's almost like you walk so we could fly only for somebody to say, now we're going to clip your wings. Like, how does that really feel? Because like, when I talk to my grandmother and I talk to other women who were in that part of that movement, they're just like enraged, like frustrated. Angry, Hmm. very angry and depressed. The number of women that I find who have fought those battles are depressed today. And And to me, the only way to fight real frustration and depression is to fight, Mm -hmm. is to get out there and make a difference. And I think we have to make a difference in voting rights. Right. I think we have to make a difference in our local elections. We have to be involved and know our local, state, and national, our county, those people who are making laws for us that we kind of just sat back and said, oh, things are going to be fine. Things are not going to be fine if we don't do something about it. And I love that you said that because I've talked to so many people who only worry about the, 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 the federal one. They only care about the, the national one. They don't care about the state level one. So they don't participate in that. They have no idea who's in their local government. They have no idea what they stand for. They have not researched them. So when they go to the, uh, and in front of uh, people and they're making these movements and they're doing all these different things and putting things on the ballot, we're not paying attention enough. I think that's true, especially Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pennsylvania had all those local and state elections, their assemblies, their Senate. Right. And what happened? Look, we almost lost Pennsylvania. We almost did because people are not paying attention to that. It takes and more it, than just the big rah-rah, the ones you feel like are the big ones I'll put my hands into it. But what about the small ones? Like, if you don't know who your county judges are, if you don't know who uh, are the DAs, if you don't know who are the minor players that you consider minor because they are still major. If you don't know who they are, you're not doing the job that you need to do to educate yourself so that you can make a stand. And we have a responsibility to do that. Do you know if we lost Pennsylvania, we would have lost our democracy? Yeah, I agree. I mean, that to me, if there's anything that I'm in this world for today, by the way, I'm 85 years old. 85 years young, because you don't look 85. There's no 85 (laughs) anywhere for you. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, I was pleased that my doctor said that last time, too. So that was pretty good. Uh, But really, I am 85. And I want everybody, young women, women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, to really stand up for themselves and stand up for their granddaughters. It's our daughters and granddaughters who have lost their way because of this. If they haven't lost their way, they will. Yeah. And, 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 their imp- and the importance to talk to their partner about what has happened so that they know that their partner will vote when it's time. It's the part, the partner also has lost his rights. You know what? And that's true. But also before you partner with somebody, (laughs) make sure your partner with someone who also aligns with your core values. Because I feel a lot of times, a lot of younger women are so gung-ho about being partnered. They're so focused on being partnered with someone that they're not 
they're not asking questions that are going to move the movement. If you're not asking the right questions regarding, you know, you know, being feminist, you know, people think that, oh, you know, women should be at home and they should be caregivers and they should be all these different things. And women are like, I can do that and I can go out here and do whatever it is I want to do. But if you have a partner that still believes <laughs> that you should be at home, then you have that internal fight already from the gate. You are so right. You are so right. And I know you've been trying to tell people that over mm -hmm. these eight seasons, right? Yes, because it's like who you partner with makes or breaks a lot of different things, not just outside of the home where they be where they're talking to their friends, but also inside of the home. Like I feel like sometimes we make we walk into fights and some deep seated fights because of the person that we choose to quote to partner with. We do. And I have been very lucky. I have been married for 48 years. Beautiful. And it's my husband's second marriage. I actually married a family of four kids. They were 7, 11, 13, and 16. Oh, wow. <laughs> they were my husband's children. They're mine now because we've grown up together. You know, we really, and it's been uh, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful journey with them. But I care about them and I care about their daughters. Right. They're, I have four granddaughters and they're in that childbearing age. They're from 23 to 26. Mm. And, uh, life has got to be um, full for them. We can't let them be deprived of their making their own decisions. I feel like that that decision when they took away our rights to for us to choose what is best for our bodies, it literally it just it's something about that that's just mind boggling because of the times that I've you know, I've had three kids of my own and just for the things that I've had to endure to bring life into this world and thinking that, you know, somebody just being able to say you don't have the ability to say, no, you don't want to have any more kids or at the time, maybe I didn't want to have kids or whatever the case may be. Um, or not being able to get birth control or not being able to get emergency contraceptive or not being able to have access, the access to it. Like I'm all for and people. They want to take it away, even the access to birth control. To, to simple birth control. I remember how hard it was being a college student getting it. And this is when obviously things weren't as bad as they are now. And then I think about, you know, my oldest daughter who's 14 and now she's coming to the age where she may want to decide if she wants to do birth control or not. And all the levels of jumping around that she'll have to do just to get simple birth control. It's, it's, and it's she shouldn't hard. have to, she, she shouldn't not have, have to. to, it's a medical right. It's a, it's our ability. We should, that should be a natural thing for us to decide. This is what I want to do. And then I go and get it, not having 20,000 hurdles just to get to one product. That's crazy to me. Uh, and it's happening. Yeah, I don't know, but is it happening in Pennsylvania? Did they it's not happening it? as much because Governor Shapiro, who I um, oh yes, have a relationship with, he know. said that he is not stopping Pennsylvania women from being able to gain access. But again, not everybody is fortunate to have voted for the right person in office that will take that stand. You know, they they didn't. So for some other women that are in a different country or different part of the world, uh, or you know, on the other different side of, state. of of United uh, States. Any in of Virginia, the in Ohio, some other place, they may not have that same ability. How did Ohio get to be in a Southern state? <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I'm from Ohio. I was, I'm, I was born in, born in Ohio and I still don't get it. It's just, it's crazy to me. I don't either. I don't either. It's um, life, I think, for young women today is difficult and more difficult than I had it, certainly. And I hope, and perhaps more difficult than you, but maybe not, because so much has gone down in the last, in the last 20 years. Right. You know, but we keep fighting. And all I can say is to all those wonderful women in your audience, please, please do something to protect women's rights. You will find it in your life, in your lifestyle, how you can do it. Do it, speak out, let your voice be heard.
And that is the premise of your book. But I also want to talk to you because there are some older women that are listening or women who are about to hit that retirement age. And, you know, when women get to the retirement age, it's the process of thinking, what have I done with my life? What am I going to do with this next phase of my life? How do you, uh, if there's a woman listening who is at that moment, what is your advice for them? My advice, well, my advice almost to all retirees is to take six months and do nothing. Mm. That's the first step, because you have to find out who you are and what your purpose will be. You know, why do you want to retire? And when you retire, what's going to be your purpose in life? Our job sometimes takes over everything, and we don't get time to think about those things. And our kids are now out of college and are, you know, or off on their own, wherever they are. What, we have an empty nest, perhaps. What is our goal? What do we want to do? When I retired, my husband and I both retired at the same time, and we said to ourselves, what is our number one priority? And it was health. Mm. How do we assure that we are healthy? What do you have to do? And so that was the first, we had to first locate ourselves in a place where there's good medical service. Right. So if you're thinking about location, that's certainly one of the things you have to think about. But I think the most important thing is, what's your passion? Mm. Do you have a passion? And I meet a lot of people who say, no, I really don't know what my passion is. Okay, you've been really caught up in work or with your kids, but now it's about you. Now it's your time. And, and you need to take that time to find out who you are or who you will be for the next 25, 30, 35 years depending on when you retire. I know people are retiring earlier. But I, <laughs> yes. I had a doctor the other day that said he expects people to live to be 105 naturally. People now who are in their 80s, he expects them to live, many of them to live to be 105. Well, that's a long time in retirement. Right. And what's going to keep you alive and thriving What's going to keep you alive and thriving is your purpose, your love, your passion. I mean, so many people say that they don't have the ability to create. Hmm. You've heard that. Oh, I'm not creative. Yes, I've heard that all quite often. But the truth is we do because we're human. Each of us, there's no other human like us. None at all. And we have the ability to create in whatever our interest is, our instincts are, our passion is, our talents are, our strengths are. Take time to find out how those five things go together. How your talents, your strengths, your intuition. Don't forget your intuition. Yeah, never leave that. <laughs> go to your intuition. Go to your gut and find out how do I make this mine? That's all. I have a daughter whose creation is, she is definitely a painter, but she is also a chef, a cook for wow. her family. Right. And that's a creation. That's a wonderful creation. We have... I have a dear friend who started painting at 65. You should see her work. It's right. wonderful. We have on our team of writers, we have a team of writers who put out a magazine here at our where we live. Right. And there are 12 of us who put that magazine out every single month. We have one person who's paid for it. The rest of us are all volunteers. We write. We make decisions. We do all of this. That's exciting. That's really exciting to be involved with. A, that's the other thing. And play in with health. It's exercise. 
It's good diet, healthy, lots of vegetables and fruits. And most important, it's socialization. Get out there and make friends. If you're single, don't give in to the fact that, oh, I don't know anybody. Get out there, my friends. Make friends. Give, right. volunteer, help young women. You will find friends through the work you do. So, uh, and, uh, and you're doing all those wonderful things. How do you make time for yourself? What's your self-care? What's your go-to self-care? My self-care is spending time with my husband. Because he, he's a photographer. Okay. And, and he's at his computer all day long. I'm over here in my office doing my writing, and I love to write. And that is also something that is stress, stress relieving. Yes, I'm a writer too. So, yes, I get that. So, you know how you just get in there and close that door and don't let anybody in and just let me do it, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's very relaxing for me. But also, being with my husband, I travel. My husband and I have been to 75 countries. Nice. Very nice. And in April, we went to Spain. And I love Spain. If you haven't been to Spain, folks, go to Spain. It's beautiful. And in August, we're going to go to Turkey. Oh, nice. I don't know how long we'll be able to do it because we're both getting older. And you might as well move on while you can. Yeah, if you don't move, you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> That's right. You got to get out there and you got to see your friends. Make sure you see your friends at least a couple times a week. Yes. Even if it's just a phone call, you know, or I don't think texting does what phone calls or Zoom or let's go have coffee or let's go to lunch do. Absolutely. Or see so you at happy hour. Listen, I'm not against that either. You can get a cute <laughs> mocktail or a cocktail, your preference. You don't have to, it's, it could be either way. Um, right. What are some of the ways that if somebody who listens to you, one, they can find the book, how can they find you on all the things? Like where oh, can they find you? Oh, I'd love to tell you. Uh, the book is definitely on Amazon, but the book is also available in almost every bookstore. I'm going to put it up here. Oops, they can't read it that way, can they? <laughs> it says, a woman's voice should be heard. And uh, the book, is, I have an, oh, I, I do a blog also. And it's, I on do my, too. Yep. it's on my website. We should do exchange links. You we should me. do that after this. I'll send that to you. Okay, um, good. So anyone that's listening who's like, I heard her say blog, I heard her say book. And what else do you got for us? And um, I, I, what else do I have? I'm, oh, I, recently I have had uh, articles in Authority Magazine, almost all online, social, social media. And uh, I've been on six podcasts. If anybody looks at podcasts, look up Aggie Jordan and you'll see me as, as some guests. I'm real excited about that. That's amazing. And for those who are listening, if this is your first time tuning into Conversations with Toy, you know that we will make everything that she just, Aggie just told us about her wonderful self, very clickable. So all you have to do is click on it. You can get to the blog, you can get to her website, you can get to the book, and we'll even put some links in for some of the podcasts as well, because we want to make sure that we, we want people to get to you and learn and, and, and get some information. And again, this is a way that you're using your voice to encourage other women as well. So that's always amazing. I want to ask if there's anybody out there who knows a thriving person, particularly a woman, but not only, who has achieved and is continuing, to, not did it in the past, does it now, at the age of 75 or over. If you go into aggiejordan.com, you can read my blog. And the name of the blog is called Raising the bar at 75 plus. I want to tell their stories so people understand you don't have to just sit back and do nothing. I love that. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this particular conversation. We, I absolutely 
loved everything about this, um, getting to know you better, um, understanding your love for writing, which of course resonates with me so much. Um, and that's how I use my voice. I use my voice on podcasts as well as writing to encourage other women to just show up as their best self and to encourage them to be a light in other women, because that's what it's about. You know, um, I might not be the person that may run for office, but if I did, I could do that too. But for now, I love using my voice. I love using my uh, the the love I have for writing. And so those two- Oh, things- and you bring it out to so many women. Yes, so many amazing women. I've had the amazing pleasure in these last three years to just really talk to women from every walk of life, from different avenues of life, different oh. peaks and valleys, some of their lows and hearing some of their lows and being encouraged by them as well. So, Oh, great. Thank you so much, Joy. This has been a delight. Thank you so much. Today is National Junk Food Day. That doesn't mean you can just eat junk food from here on out. That just means in moderation, enjoy the things that would be considered a junk food. If it's a comfort food, today is the day to enjoy just that. Now you might say, I enjoy my junk food every single day. Well, that's between you and whoever you call your spiritual guidance. Let me just say, For the rest of us that know better, because when you know, you know, you know that you can't eat junk food every single day, especially as you get older. So that is what today's national holiday is. What did you think about today's episode as we talked to Aggie? Aggie was a blessing. I'm telling you, nothing is more beautiful than seeing women who are older, who know what they know, who know that they can inspire and do just that. For women who are seasoned that can speak life into you without having to use the these and the thous, I promise you, I employ you to get around an older person that has the right mind, somebody who's smart, somebody who has is seasoned and knows what they're talking about, somebody who done been there and can done that and can put on a t-shirt just to display all of the amazing things that they have done. Get underneath one of those seasoned women. I count it an honor and a privilege when I hear sound wisdom coming from a young lady or a young woman or an older woman. It, listen, all women, all people, I enjoy every bit of it. So thank you, Aggie, for being a part of this conversation. Make sure, make sure, make sure that you not only listen to the episode, but that you, you know, give a little rating for the episode, give a rating for the podcast in general, do all the things, share, share, share. I can't share that enough. Go ahead and share the highs and the lows because, you know, people have very much misconstrued hard work from people who are here that are trying to kill it in the game to people out here who just have things thrown to them and at them. So again, I hope that this episode resonated with you. I hope there was something that you got from this episode. I enjoyed working with the people that I work with and getting to bring to you these amazing episodes because it's important for us to have certain conversations, especially because again, we don't want to feel or make anyone else feel that they're by themselves or there's some magical unicorn and that they're not worthy of the change that they're trying to implement. So Uh, You know, with all that being said, I will say this, the drink of the day goes out to none other than Barbie. It's called the Sun-Kissed Soiree. It's sweet, but also has tartness. It has an infusion of tequila, lime, and pink dragon fruit puree finished with black seed salt rim. It looks absolutely amazing. I will put that information for the drink inside of the show notes. Make sure that you always take your time to visit the show notes because sometimes, not if not even sometimes, I always put the blog in there. I always put extra information. You can find out how to reach Aggie and all the wonderful things about her because she truly is a jewel. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you, Aggie, for being a part of this podcast, this particular episode because we're talking about empowerment, encouraging, and making sure that you're there. Women should be heard. Women should be understood. We should have the time to do the things that we need to do for ourselves and all of the things in between. That is this week's episode. We do have an amazing guest for next week where we will be talking to those who are married or desire to be married. This is the episode next week for you because we're going to bring in our good sister who is going to just tell us about all the things about marriage and how to make marriage work, especially if you are a Christian, um, Christian base, and you want to learn about some of those things that we do that we know is getting underneath our spouse's ear and our spouse's nerves and our spouse's all the things. And so how can we encourage our spouses by also making sure we're working on ourselves? This conversation next week should not be missed. I've enjoyed coming to you and with you. We 
we will be having a break in the season. I just have not determined when and where that break will be, but I will keep you in, you know, informed and keep it all posted so that you're not shocked or shell shocked about that, that weight. But we will be taking a break so I can get ready to come back and empower and inspire for the fall. For those who do not know me well, fall is one of the best seasons of west of, of, of our time i do love good summer like i feel like i'm going into one season that i love into another and something about being outside you know admiring the park or playing in the park and doing the things that need to be done it's nothing like it so have yourself the most amazing weekend we will be back lord's will next week with a new episode of conversations with toy if you like what you've heard and you want to be of support there are a couple things you can do that cost you free 99 not three as in the number three but free 99 that means you are listening to this podcast in its entirety you are going to do the most of making sure that you share the podcast you listen, you share, and you make sure that you subscribe as well as make sure that you put yourself in the best position to hear the episodes at all times. And that's, of course, by subscribing, but make sure that you also review and share your review on social media. I appreciate you. I thank you. It has been a pleasure. We will see you next week with Conversations with Toy. Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.